Okay, in this video, we are going to look at uh, some more solved problems for Moore machine. So this is a very interesting question. In this question, we are asked to construct a Moore machine to generate to generate the once complement once complement of a binary string. So we have already studied about the once complement of a binary string in digital system design. So so suppose if you are given with this binary string, say one one zero zero one. Uh, the once complement is going to be the invert of inversion of this. That means you have to invert all the ones to zeros and zeros to ones. So the once complement of this particular binary string is going to be zero zero one one zero. Okay. So so given this input, so given this input, our machine should be able to generate this output or something very similar to this output. Okay. So that's our objective. Okay, so le le let's look at how it, it can be designed. So let's start with the starting state, say Q0. Okay, so so Q0, in Q0, if you see a one, if you see a one, okay, so let's, let's make it as a starting state. So the, we have to define two transitions. So I have to design a transition on zero and on one. Okay, suppose, uh, suppose I'm seeing it, seeing a one in my input string then i'm going to output zero okay so if again again if i'm seeing a zero if i'm seeing a zero in my input string i have to output one so that will be defined at q1 so at q1 i'm going to output one and now from q1 from q1 if you see a if you see a one you have to output a zero okay Okay, again, from Q1, if you see a zero, you have to output one. So this is, so, so you have to convert all the zeros to ones and all the ones to zeros, right? So that's it, that's it, we have done. So the, the minor problem with this, with this uh, Moore machine is that it will produce an, produce, uh, an additional output. So, so if, you, if you look at this, uh, this machine, uh, the output of this machine. Let, let me write the output of this machine uh, upon upon the string which is given there. Okay, so so I'm going to write the output here. So my input, my input. Let let, let my input be uh, one one zero zero one. So let's check what will happen to the output. Okay. So remember, remember that. At at Q zero there is there is an output zero, okay that that will be by default in your output, okay so there is no way that I can avoid this so that zero will be there in your output, and from there your 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 once you are parsing this binary string, okay so uh, so let's go through the string now, so when I'm when I'm when I'm getting a one I'll be getting a Q zero as an output, which is which is very clear from the uh, from the Moore machine that you designed. Okay, so so let me write the rest of the outputs here. So if, once I'm parsing this, I'll be getting the outputs as follows. So upon one, I will get zero. Next one, I will get a zero. Next zero, I'll get one. Next zero, I'll get a one. And next is one, I will get a zero. Okay, so if you look at this part alone, if you look at this part alone, this is going to be your one complement one's complement of the given input. Okay, this is, um, so you should say that you have to ignore the, ignore the first, or ignore the first, first uh, symbol here. So you have to ignore the first character, ignore the first character. Which means I have to, I have to ignore this zero. This is not required for our once complement. So, so we, we, we are only, you know, this, this part only is related to the once complement. So this is the part of the string with, uh, you know, this is the once complement of the given input. Okay. So it's, it's very important to ignore the first character, right? So that's how we can, we can design the Moore machine to generate the once complement of a binary string. Okay. So in this question, 
Okay, in this question, we are asked to construct a Moore machine to count the number of occurrences of the substring AB, given that the alphabet set is A comma B. Okay, so, so what we are essentially going to do here is we are going to consider our delta, that is the output set as going as, as zero comma one. And uh, whenever we, we find a pattern AB in our input string, we are going to output one, okay. Uh, so whenever we find we we uh, we encounter an a b in our string we are going to output one otherwise we are we are going to output zero okay so finally when you count the number of ones in your output you will get the number of occurrences of the substring a b so that's a, that's going to be our strategy and uh, let, let's start designing this so let, let's start at q zero and uh, and if I'm saying B's, okay, so let me make it very clear. So, so I'm, I'm starting at Q0 and if I see B's, okay, so I'm not going to count anything. So it's going to be, the output is going to be zero. But if I see an A, if I see an A, then, uh, then there are chances that I am going to encounter an AB. Okay, so I will proceed further and I will reach Q1, okay. So here, here again, I will be having an output zero because I have not seen an A, B till now, okay? So from here, from here, if you see a B, from here, if you see a B, that means I'm, I can go to another state and say I can output one. So this means that if you see, see an, a pattern of A, B, you will be getting a one, okay? Now say at Q1, at Q1, if you are, uh, say at Q1, if you are seeing an A again, okay, so we have, de we have defined a transition of transition of Q Q1 on B to Q2, but we are not defined the transition of Q1 on A. Remember, uh, transitions on both A and B has to be defined for every state, since this is similar to a DFA. Okay, so remember that from every state, every transition must be defined. So if you look at Q0, we have defined the transition on A and transition on B. Now from Q1, we have already defined the transition on B that, that goes to Q2. Now, now at Q1, if you're, if you're again getting an A, this again means that you, you, you have to go back to a, Q1 itself because suppose you're seeing A, 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 something like this, then you have to, you have to be at Q1 because if you, if you get a B followed by an A, then you, you'll be in Q2. Okay, so so that means you, you have seen one one string of A B. Okay. So if you're getting an A from Q1, you have to you have to be at Q1 itself. Okay, that's what is indicated here. Now, now from Q2, from Q2, uh, suppose if you're getting A, okay. So from Q2, you have to define the transitions on both A and B. Okay. Now if you're getting a getting a A then uh, then you have the chances of getting a b after your a so so hopefully you can you can go to q1 right so from q2 if you are getting an a you can go to q1 okay that means if you are if you're getting a b again then you will be again at q2 again uh, you know the output will be one and and it gets added up to to our output okay now from q2 if you are getting a b okay so that means, uh, so again, it means that if you are at Q2, that means you, you have already seen an AB, okay? And then if you see a B, then uh, it means that you have to start seeing the AB pattern again. So you have to scan, scan from the beginning. So that's why we have to go back to Q0 if you're getting a B, okay? So, so, so this is how the, 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 uh, the Moore machine looks like, okay? Remember, very importantly, you have to have these outputs mentioned in every state. And also don't forget to mark the transitions on transitions on every symbol. And uh, you have to mark the starting state. And remember, there are no final states for a Moore machine. So never put a double circle in any of the states. So we don't have the concept of a final state. And uh, if you if you recall this DFA, this DFA, this is very similar to the DFA that we have that we have designed to accept accept strings containing the substring AB. Okay, so if you if you go back and recall, we have already created a DFA 
to accept the accept um, you know accept a string containing the substring AB. So here, what we are doing here is that we are just counting it. We are just counting it. So whenever we meet, uh, whenever we encounter an AB, we are going to output one here. Okay, so that's only minor modification that's done. So whenever we encounter with a pattern of AB, we are always outputting a one. Okay, that's how we are going to get the output as you know number of sub, number of occurrences of the substring AB. So we can actually try out by putting some some strings and then uh, verify that this is working. Okay, for example, for example, if you if you give a string like AB, AA, BA, BB. So if you if you scan this if you scan this if you put this string to the to our Moore machine it will it will locate these ABs okay so it will it will say the output will have output will contain two ones okay so this you can verify this okay I'm not writing the entire output so but I am very sure that the output will contain two a two ones because uh, you know we have two ABs present in our string. Okay, so we can verify this by parsing this string to to, to the Moore machine which we have constructed.